when this was the tea. And uh, I don't know, that one beside it may have just fallen off the wood pile. But I'm not sure. And now look what I got over here. That is brand new. On the top there, that's been moved. And then we got the T. I'm calling it a T and directly in east and west, which I find very interesting. And look what showed up here night before last. A third, I don't know if they're starting one or or they're just leaving that one alone. It's in the water. Themselves. It's in the water. Huh. That's crazy. Okay. Before we get uh, going with this little video, some of you already know this. I, I actually put a post up. Uh, the flute is here. The flute made it. Um, pretty excited. I need to do a thank you and a shout out to Doug and Vicky. They are down in the state of Virginia. I thank you guys very much for doing this, helping me out with this. For those that are new to the channel, thank you for being here. Um, I appreciate you guys being here. and. Uh, I hope you stay with me on the journey. For those that are new and that don't know, I use a flute, a native cording flute, to go and connect with these beings. I have a native flute here um, I've had with me for probably about 25 years. I also made one for myself too, and it's, it's got a deeper tone, but I, it's like a three-hold flute, right? A long story short, um, I do use a native flute to connect with these, with these Sasquatch, with these Bigfoot. The response has been positive and the first time I took the flute out there with me and, and played it, they, they rushed to come and I think they rushed to that area to see what, where the sound was coming from, who was playing the sound, who was making this noise, right? And there's a few places that I go, there's about four different clans that I go and visit and each place has responded positively to the flute. So. I've just made it one of the things that I do to connect with them. It's such a distinctive sound and, and a soft, non-threatening sound. It probably was the best idea that I've, I've had uh, where it comes to uh, trying to connect with them and gain their trust. And, and as well, for those that are new, I am not, I'm kind of on the other side of the fence. I don't believe these things are evil. I don't believe these things are bad, uh, you know, some horrible monster. You will learn that if you stay with me. I've always went into the territory with the mindset of they're the teacher, I'm the student, right? Because we just don't know enough. We don't know enough about them. We don't know, we don't know how they do the things they do. Um, it's they're quite a bit of what they do and what they're about is a mystery documenting it and we're seeing these things take place but we don't understand how they're able to do it are they interdimensional do they come through dimensional doors uh, are they perhaps are they able to you know cross between the physical and the spiritual realms but like i say you will see if you stay with me i'm not on the side where they're just a physical being and uh, they're evil and they hurt people and they're nephilim fallen angels i believe they've always been here and the native people i am a half blood i'm a half breed and i know a lot of the stories and legends from my people and from other tribes that are in this area um, they've always they've always known they were here right and they were they accepted each other left each other alone uh, there are there are stories where they have helped the native people um, survive whether it was a period of starvation. There are the legends, there's the stories where they've brought in food or showed um, the hunters where game was because they couldn't find any game. Like there's some pretty amazing stories there and but I'm only here to share with you what I know um, to each their own, right? I'm kind of of the minority, I guess. The flute 
It's been talked about getting another flute because I have, I have a couple of, of melodies in my head and it pertains to the Bigfoot. It's old and um, I have a name for it and everything. You guys will hear it here shortly at one point. The melody's always been in my head and I've always wanted to play it. I do play a little bit of guitar and a little bit of mandolin, but I don't, I can't play the melody on those instruments because it's, it's coming from a pentatonic scale that sound right and it's a native flute native flutes are tuned to a pentatonic scale and and the one that i have the notes i can't hit those low notes that's in my head on on the flute i have so it was discussed about um raising money through the buy me a coffee you know it wasn't picking up one of my subscribers doug and his wife approached me and asked politely if they could get this for me, this flute, right? And uh, I, I agreed. I do want to talk a little bit about the importance and, and the story and traditions about the flute. What we need to do now is I want to open this up and show you um, what we got. <clears throat> and if you find me rambling on, it's because I'm kind of excited. There we go. While we're doing this, um, I'll talk a little bit about the flute here. And I just want to mention that there's a lot of people that can't listen to this. And playing one of these for the last 25 years, almost 30 years, I've learned quite a bit about what what's happening there with uh, a lot of people like i say it, it'll affect people differently some people it'll relax calm them some people it'll put them to sleep and then there are others who and from what i can gather a good example is um, i know somebody who's who's a very angry person a very angry person and whenever i played the flute for this person or they heard flute music native flute music he just he can't he can't listen to it and his first the first words out of his mouth is oh no i don't like flute music and what i've learned about the flute this is a storyteller and it's a healer and it's a teacher uh it's therapy right uh the native people knew this they they knew what, what this was and um not quite here okay and so, you know, we, I got talking with him, this person, I don't want to mention names, but he spent many years angry and that's all he knew. And whenever, and so, you know, I kind of helped him through it and we walked through it and talked about it and what the flute was doing. It, it, what it does, it, it, it can speak to you. There's a spirit here, right? It can help you dream, it can help you sleep. What it was doing to him was he, it, he wanted to relax for being angry for so many years. It was just instinct to, for him to fight that. He just wanted to stay mad, right? He just wanted to stay angry because that's what he knew. He was an angry person. He has since moved beyond the anger. And I hope that, you know, flute music was one of the things that helped him because he can listen to it now. Whereas before, no, he, no, no, no. But it is also with people with anxiety disorders and PTSD and, you know, we all have our own our own issues and our own internal struggles that we go through through life and some you know some can never go beyond those and it, it becomes all consuming and that's that it becomes a part of them it's something like this that can help you can help you out of that you know that's something i believe and i've seen it work and even if it's just a form of relaxation and meditation right this can center you going back to bigfoot going back to the sasquatch I think it was one of the best ideas I, I could have done was to use this to connect with them because they would have known the sounds, right? My mother and I were talking about even the languages here, the, you know, the native languages, whether it be Sioux, Cree, Blackfoot, um, Dene, you know, there's all these different languages in this area. Um, they would have heard those languages spoke for thousands of years and they would have heard the instruments as well. They would have heard the singing, uh, you know, the powwow music, the the uh, flute music, the drums, the jingles, the rattles, the prayers, um, they would have heard these things, right? And, you know, we don't know the age or what, how, how old they, 
how old they can live. Again, we just don't know enough about them, but there are old ones. Like uh, if you go back and for the new people on board, if you go back and there's a video there, I think it was um, uh, Bigfoot in the Kill site. My grandmother, when she seen when they were on a hunting uh, road trip walking, and my grandfather had had shot a moose, and they had to stay there and basically process the meat, right, dry it and build fires. And but she had seen one there, and she figured it was old, it was frail, and it moved slow. So they age, and I've seen the baby, uh, a young little baby Bigfoot with the mother, and they must have a a cycle of life like we do, right? So, um, but we don't know how old they live. Maybe they can live two, three hundred, four hundred years. That we don't know. But they would know these sounds, right? They would know these sounds. And it, after I chose to do it and I seen the response, it was like, yes, it, it, it felt right. It is going to set the stage every time I go out there for whatever outcome, right? And, and so far, like I say, it's been positive. It's been a positive thing. I'm gonna open the box now. We're gonna we're gonna reveal and review, and uh, yeah. So keep that in mind. You know, pay attention to how you feel when you hear this music. And and I was always taught that it's a reflection of what's inside us. Don't blame the flute. Don't blame the teacher or, or the healer. Well, we'll we'll get on with the reveal. <laughs> mm. Oh my goodness. Wow. Okay. Uh, does anybody remember this? Uh, when we were kids, yeah. It was always a fight for the bubble wrap. There you go. Well, I like the fringes. This is just beautiful. My idea here is um, we do, I, I will do a, before, I won't play this right yet for you, but I will. And uh, what I want to do first is I want to do a cleansing ceremony. It's just what we do for anything like this, right? It's, uh, I'll do a cleansing ceremony and it will have a name. All my flutes are named and this one has a name and I will reveal that as well uh, when I do the cleansing ceremony. And then I will play a song for you. Okay, so there you go, everybody. I'm excited to to see how, what kind of response I get. I, I'm sure it'll be a good, I'm sure they will enjoy it. So I've got a whole bunch of melodies in my head. I do, pl I do play, like I say, I do play guitar and a little bit of mandolin, and but it's always been about the flute for me. And my grandfather, um, when I was maybe three years old, three years old, I remember him making me, uh, some of you may have seen them, they're willow whistles, right? They're made of willow. They're kind of like a flute, but not as large. And I remember him making one and he gave it to me. And I blew on that thing and played that thing for uh, as long as it lasted. It was something that stayed with me. And as I got into my later teens, I searched for this, right? And now this will be the, the second one. And maybe down the road there'll be a, a third or maybe a fourth, but I'll, I'll end this here. And I just wanted to share this all with you. I hope you guys, uh, for the new ones that have come on board, I hope you have an idea of what's happening here. Uh, and if not, I say, you know, I would suggest go back and maybe binge watch on my videos, right? Uh, a lot of channels too, I got to catch up, right? I get so busy with my own things and some of the other Bigfoot researchers that I follow that I kind of I try to stay connected but I get busy with my stuff here with the videos and going out and and putting all of the videos together for you all that I, I just don't have a lot of time to binge watch right but when I do I binge I binge for like a, a day or two and again I want to thank Doug and Vicky for doing this for me the amount of money that they paid for this flute I thought there would have been a case involved with the with the purchase but it, there isn't but what um, I, I just spoke to my mom and we still do we still do a lot of leather work and bead work and we make moccasins out of like tan moose hide and you know the sewing and everything like that but we were talking 
I talked to her yesterday about her and I possibly making a case for this. We're kind of talking it out and planning and, and just trying to figure out how we would go about doing it. I will have a case for it and whether it be one that I purchase or one I make, uh, there will be a case for this. But I do, it's gonna, the inside is going to have to be soft so that it doesn't wear down the shine off of the flute, right? Just an update on the weather, pretty much all the snow is gone and the water, the water is running everywhere, right? I've been walking in mud and water for the last three days and the rivers and the creeks, everything's running. Uh, I'm excited for what we're going to see and what we're going to experience. I want to get out in the bush, I want to get out in the trees and you guys are coming with me. And like I say, I think the Sasquatch, the Bigfoot, they would know the sound. Because I hear, I do hear uh, sometimes when I'm out there, I hear sounds that are similar to this, the, the whistle that they make. It's a very deep, uh, windy sounded whistle that they can make on, on their own. Um, I don't think they're using an instrument. I don't see them, but I hear it, right? I can hear it coming from the trees. They are okay with this because it's similar to the sounds that they can make. Like I say, I'm the student when I'm out there and we need to go in with an open mind and, and be willing to learn something and respecting their species, their territories. I think that's the only way we're gonna get anywhere in learning about them. When I go in, they are the teacher, I am the student, they're in the driver's seat, and whatever they share with us, I'm okay with. And I hope you all are okay with it as well. So, and on that note, I will sign off and we will see you in the trees. Um, take care, stay safe, bye for now.